a ball falls from a high place, there will be a force that opposes its movement. This will happen for any object moving through air. The opposing force is called air resistance or drag force. The drag force's size will depend on the shape and the speed of the object. The drag coefficient is a measure of how easily an object moves through the air. High-speed trains are designed to have a low drag coefficient by having streamlined shapes to allow air to flow more smoothly around them. More fast-moving objects have streamlined shapes since the drag force increases with increasing speed. Objects falling through air experience two main forces, weight and the drag force. In this image, we can see that this ball has just been dropped with a velocity of 0 meters per second. This will mean that there is no drag. The downward force is weight, which makes the object accelerate towards Earth. The new image shows that the ball is now moving and has a velocity and a drag force. With increasing velocity, the drag force would also increase. The drag force, as I mentioned before, opposes the movement and so acts upwards. Now to get the total downward force, you need to subtract the drag force from the weight force. At this moment, the ball would be accelerating. In the newer image, the weight and drag forces are equal. There is no unbalanced force, so its acceleration would be zero. This means the ball has reached its terminal velocity. It is still falling, but does not accelerate. If you jump out of a plane, you will accelerate until eventually reaching terminal velocity. When you open your parachute, there will be an increase in the drag force which will cause you to go upwards for a while and then decelerate. Well, that's all for today. If you preferred it instead of a whack in the face with your textbook, then like and consider subscribing.